Hello, everyone. Thank you so, so, so much for watching that. I, um, uh, I thought it flew by. What did you think, Bradley? Yeah, I mean, how many, <laughs> how many times do you think you've watched that that ninety minutes? I mean, certain bits I watched significantly more than others because we. I mean, so the very first edit of that documentary, which I started, uh, would have been like. Well, we didn't finish filming until two weeks ago, but I started the edit start of August, and the first edit was, was it four and a half hours long, I think? Pretty much. Yeah, so certain scenes lost a lot of content, but uh, as I think it was Oscar Wilde said, I would have written a shorter note, but I didn't have time. You know, it takes a lot more effort to make short stuff. Um, and hopefully true. it's all the better for it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, man, I agree. It flew by. And uh, thanks for everyone in the comments, uh, making it, helping it fly by. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it as much as we did making it. Yeah, yeah, most of it was fun. Most of it was fun. Um, somebody wants the uncut version. Um, I don't, I, I, you say that, I don't think you do. It was, I mean, there was some, like, like we could have had, we are going to do... Um, an uncut version of Martin's interview because there was so much good stuff in that and we're going to turn that into a video about the history of IPA. Um, we're going to follow up the interview with David. We're going to be doing a video with him, a longer form video in which we visit lots of different Desi pubs. Um, the other stuff probably went for, for good reason. Uh, although I'm sure you all wanted more of Brad uh, Brad's legs out. Uh, <laughs> it's very, very niche, isn't it? Very niche. <laughs> It's so weird because I didn't even um, when we were filming it, I didn't even clock your outfit really. I was just like, oh, you know, Brad, Brad in a lab coat. And then yeah. when we showed, like, we so we did a premiere last last week at meantime, and so we were there, and there were fifty people watching it. And when you walked on screen, people burst into hysterics, and I was like, <laughs> why? Good. And then yeah. I realised, yeah, it's because it looked like you had nothing on underneath. Yeah, it's it definitely. I said in the comments, it, it reminded me. Me and you in lab coats, something Bill and Ted. Are they in lab coats at some point in Bill and Ted? Or have I just sort of clunked that in my head and it's not a thing? Uh, I can't remember. I can't, I I can't like think of them. Somebody in the comments will know for sure. Yeah, I feel like there's a big segment where they're wearing lab coats for some reason. But... Everybody, everybody is asking for the uncut version. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how I produced that because I've obviously cut it down. Though. Like, do you think? Final cut. Or let me go back in and just con uh, command Z all the way back to early August. Uh, yeah, like a sort of time machine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, I don't think it will, no. Johnny. I don't think it will. But you must have that rendered out somewhere. Um, yeah, in maybe it's in the of agony. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, I, I'm pleased to say that I outlasted a brand new Mac computer. Uh, the the Mac started giving in, but I. Um, well, no, I gave in on frequent occasions and, and drank a lot of beer and ate takeaway. But, uh, well, we both made it out. I'm on the Mac now. We all managed to uh, manage to make it. Make it um, right. Yeah. So so this live show is all about, A, me and Brad actually putting a full stop on this because we, so Meantime approached us pretty shortly after we finished Keep Cask Alive, which is, um, so Meantime are owned by Asahi. Asahi also owned Fuller's. So they approached us shortly after this. So this has been on our mind for pretty much a year, this idea, and we started filming it um, March, April time. Technically, the very first shoot was early June, but sort of started putting everything together then. So it's been the longest project we've ever worked on. Um, and now, now it's done, you know? It's a very Is weird feeling. I mean, they, they brewed the first batch, Johnny, and it was a big batch. Was it 15,000 cans worth? Is that right? Or am I? It's, it's seven, seven and a half thousand litres. So it depends on the split of can yeah. to cake. Yeah. I mean, let's let's hope that it does really well. People enjoy it and they, they bring it back again. Because I think, uh, oh, good shout, Andy. Can, can we also, just before we get too deep into this, address the fact that you've either come as if it's St. Patrick's Day or as a hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that was Ben that said I've come dressed as a hop or somebody else. But yeah, I have pretty much embraced the sort of hop. And also, uh, who can afford to heat their, heat their houses, Johnny? I, I haven't got any heating on. And my house, the insulation is terrible. Yeah, so the insulation in your house is terrible. I'm sitting here in a fleece because I'm cold. 
basically. Well, my, the, the, stu- um, the, stu- the studio's balmy, you know? Maybe I'll come and move balmy. into the studio then, eh? Hey, yeah, I mean, there's just about room on the floor. Right at the I... bottom of the garden. <laughs> the the Poddington Bee at the bottom of the garden. You're in the right colour. I am in the right um, colour. Um, yeah, I can make I think most is currently, um, currently Oktoberfest beer. I have one, two, three boxes of Oktoberfest beer because I'm going to do uh, the blind taste test that I've been doing. Yes. I'm going to do a, a Fest, UK Fest beer blind taste test. Blind taste fest. Blur. There's something in that. I'll work it out. Hang on, aren't we uh, doing a aren't we doing a, a, a fest bid next week, no? We, you and me are doing the originals. Right, okay. We're gonna drink the six that you drink at Oktoberfest. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, and then I'm gonna do a blind taste test of the UK versions. So you're gonna get like the Aldi ones and all that kind of stuff. Uh somebody mentioned that today about getting the Aldi ones. Uh maybe. Um they're probably just a knockoff version of one of the main ones is probably brewed by AB in Bevel Spartan or somebody. Um, but no, I mean, I'm talking like, uh, like, like Lost and Grounded, Braybrook, Don Zoko, Verdant have got one, uh, Manchester Union have sent me one, McCall's Brewing have sent me one. I've got, I've got so many. I saw the lineup earlier on, tw- on yeah. the Twitch R. Yeah, it looks yeah. and I've also got some German non traditional fest ones. But anyway, this isn't about our fest beer video. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, Callum, <laughs> the hop guy and the priest of yeast. Um, there's got to be something in the pre- priest of yeast as well. Um, I like the suggestion of the sort of lab coats as merch. Although, would a would a um, what do you call it? Like a, a an apron be better for for merch for brewing? Like a brewing apron kind of thing. Yeah, Pro- probably. Or a I work jacket. They're very popular now. They are. Um, I don't know where we buy cheap enough work jackets to uh, to sort of customize them. Maybe we go to maybe we're going on an adventure trip to France, Johnny, to to, to the Bricons and and buy lots of French workwear. And, you you um, lost me at Bricons. Yeah, yeah. We'll go and and buy all the sort of stylish stuff that all the trendy companies uh, copy these days. Ah, oh, right. I see. That's that's where it's coming from. Is it? Mm-hmm. Um, somebody's actually said you look like a garden pea. I'm glad people are on my wavelength. Thanks. Um, is it cold in the Brudio? No, it's it's beautifully warm. Um, I do have a little heater that um, well, it says it's 20 degrees. I told it to stay at 18. Um, people can buy the now IPA cans, uh, from the meantime web store. Uh, they went live on Friday, uh, and most of them arrived for the people that ordered them in time for the tasting. Apologies to anybody, um for whom it didn't didn't arrive in time uh but yeah you can get that at the meantime store there's a link underneath the documentary just in the descriptions box um for you to buy that um so yeah so this is an opportunity for you for you to ask questions anything you might want to know about the documentary about the filming of it about why we work with meantime about the the recipe the homebrew recipe or the main recipe we, we're an open book when it comes uh to this documentary because we're really passionate about getting people excited about these beers again uh keep cask alive was a real eye-opener and getting us excited about british styles and now we're getting very excited about british ingredients and i think that's something we're gonna dive into a little bit more as well over the over the next year um so uh somebody's asked what's next we want a bit of a tease we don't we literally don't know do we know we got we've got, I think we've got a few ideas. We've got we've got something off the back of this that we'll be filming at some point. Um, cryptic, Johnny. Cryptic, but rack your brain. We did talk about it this week <laughs> with David. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah the the something something around Desi pubs. Going deeper into that, hopefully. Um. Uh, so yeah, that 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 is definitely going to be next. We're going to be doing that sometime next year. In terms of like big feature length kind of. Oh dear, Johnny appears to have gone. Um, now I'm a bit like uh, Garth in Wayne's World, and I I feel very much alone. I'm back, back. I'm back. There we go. There we go. I don't I quite know what happens there. I nudged my mouse. And, don't nudge the um... mouse, Johnny. See, you've got a non-Mac mouse there for your Mac. Which not Mac Mouse from a Mac because I hate Macs. Sad, I, d- I don't want to give Mr. Mac any more money than I have to. So, for this a, is a... For a man that hates Macs. You certainly use Macs a lot. To the <laughs> Mac. Use a lot of Mac, but I don't have an iPhone. 
I don't have no anything else. Um, anyway, uh, what was I yes, iPod, yeah. aren't you? That iPod classic. Everyone iPod. sees you with your little, your little white earbuds looking real my, cool. Real I, I never there. owned an iPod either. Fuck off. My, 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 no, never. My, uh, my dad worked for Creative Labs, the rival. Yeah. So I'm, if I'd have seen with that. an iPod, Whew. I'd have well, been you in never, trouble. You, I, I can't believe you never, were you never looking at an iPod and your Creative Labs monstrosity side by side and sort of going, mm, I love my father, but Stevie here has got a, a better product. Never? Never. The, <laughs> the Creative Labs... <laughs> we keep it's going off on tangents. This is the Friday 5 p.m. podcast. Um, uh, wrong button, Johnny. Yes, very much so. Uh, have we tried the Utopian Pale? Uh, I haven't. I haven't tried the Utopian Pale. I was invited to a press launch of that, um, and they sent the beer to my old address. So I couldn't... Uh, couldn't actually be part of it. Uh, yes, this Q&A will be live on YouTube. Soon as we hit end, uh, it will then go live on YouTube after it's sort of uh, mixed it all down on, in, in the YouTube back end. So it will be here uh, once we're done. So if you've got Don't to go to bed... Don't all sign off now, Johnny. You've just told everyone they can... Yeah, they want to ask questions, right? We've got people um, from Australia. Somebody, somebody like in the comments of the documentary said they're up at four to watch this. So yeah. they might want to go to bed. They might want to go to bed. Um, right. Uh, sorry. So I'm just going back to where we started getting questions. Sorry. Um, what's next? Yeah, we did that one. Are you publishing the recipe? Yes. So, uh, I still haven't got the final, final recipe of the full scale batch from meantime. As soon as I get that, I'll be scaling it down, uh, for homebrew. Uh, I will publish that. And I think probably we'll do a video on it eventually as well. I think that'd be fun. Um, yeah. to rebrew it there, there's there are some tweaks i'd i'd make with this with this version as well um which uh well I don't want to talk about it now I, I mean i'd up the dry hop a little bit further i think we've got room room for that it ended up at three grams per liter and i think we could go a little bit higher on the dry hop um, surely we've got to do a side by side johnny here we've got to do a brett one and a non-brett one Right. And that's your thing. Yeah, somebody in the comments said, let's do a Brett version. It might have even been Reiki from Malt Miller. Uh, we could definitely do a Brett version. So, yeah, brew a double batch and ferment one over Brett. That would be awesome. Um, I haven't tried this year's Fuller's Vintage yet. No, it came out, was it like a couple of weeks ago? Uh, but I'm going to a Fuller's pub tomorrow. So, I will be trying it then. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, excited Which Fuller's pub, Johnny? Name and chain slash. Uh, uh, well, actually, it's Parcel Yard, it's the one in King's Cross. Nice. Um, because I'm now I'm now a member of the um of the board for the British Guild of Beer Writers. Oh, and we have our, a pretty big meeting, deal. Then? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're having our bi-monthly meeting, quarterly meeting. Nice. Don't know one of them. Um, homebrew recipe covered that. Uh, what percentage ratio of the hops we use? Olicana the lead. Uh, Harlequin was the lead. Uh, sorry, Olicana, um, Whirlpool, Whew. Goldings was the lead in the boil, Olicana was the lead in the Whirlpool, and Harlequin was the lead in the dry hop. Uh, Jester featured pretty minimally in the dry hop, but quite prominent in the Whirlpool. Uh, Olicana was sort of um, in everything in fairly large quantities. Um, not sure. I think Brexit might be still stopping us from shipping stuff out there. So web shops aren't currently able to ship to the uh, to the EU very easily. Uh, so I'm afraid I don't think so, but I can check with me time. It's possible. Um, the recipe when it's done will be on the Grainfather app and probably either Brewfather or um, what's the other one? The one I usually use or used to. Can't remember. It'll be on lots of websites and also we'll probably sell a kit via Malt Miller. Malt Miller might be able to confirm that we will do that, uh, and the recipe will be on there as well. Um, is the future of craft beer in doubt due to the state of the economy and energy prices? Woo! What do you think, Brad? Uh, uh, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. We're all we're all in doubt due to the state <laughs> of the economy and the energy prices. As I said, I'm bloody freezing in my house. Uh, you know, I'm a semi-successful YouTuber and still. 
can't afford to turn. We the upgraded in. ourselves. Are we semi-successful? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, then we've gone from underachievers to semi-successful. <laughs> well, today, tonight, okay. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've hit one hundred forty-two thousand subscribers, guys. Thank it's you true. very much. It is absolutely. Um, it's amazing. Insane. I remember the days of of thinking that getting a hundred views on a video and reaching a thousand subs was was crazy. I think we did it like a celebratory video for 10,000 subs, which is a big deal, but it seems kind of crazy now. Um, yeah, I mean, the energy prices are insane. Um, like the, I mean, nearly 10 times the pricing has gone up. Um, the cost of living crisis, the state of the economy is going to have huge impact on rate of sale in pubs, rate of sale on cars, which is really important, and just people's ability to spend any money on beer. Uh, the untalked about thing, because it doesn't affect as many industries, is the cost of CO2, which is skyrocketing. The cost of cardboard um, has uh, like tripled, which is hurting you know web stores, uh, homebrew stores. Uh, it's just it's just literally everything, like a thousand cuts kind of thing. And it's already taken down. We're already having the worst year for brewery closures that we've had since the 80s. Um, and that's before this shit started happening. So it's dire in the UK and it, it won't be much better elsewhere, although we are <laughs> we are doing our absolute best to make the worst of a worse situation. Um, Martin, we covered that one. Um, feel free to update your question if there's more things you want to know. Um, Olakan is my favorite hop of those three. Um, I think it's brilliant. I think Harlequin is great and it's juicy um, and it's delicious, but Olakan, I think, has a bit of really unique character to it. It's got, I think, like I said in the video, like a slightly um, kind of twinings herbal tea sweet thing to it, but also it's got juiciness. It's a really like complex and not punchy hop. It's a really nice, rounded. Like, I think it, it, it's sort of almost like centennial like it's like you could put it into any beer and it would improve it um, or you could just let it really shine and it would do great as well uh, flash up the comment from Eldev Johnny oh god where, where, where is it right right at the bottom Eldev don't forget to like this video and the documentary guys yes that really helps us thank you thank you yeah, yeah. If, if we're you so could bad always... at playing the game aren't we yeah, yeah, we we're so bad. Yeah, like, like, just sorry, I've got a bit of a like a feedback going on here, but we are very bad at sort of telling people yeah. to like and subscribe us. Right. So, if you could like this documentary, it it like massively help us out. You say you're getting feedback. I feel like I'm getting a bit of feedback, or we're a bit of delay, or something. Are you hearing yourself again, or me? I'm hearing myself. Huh. Let me let me play with the settings. That's uh, that's that's never happened to us before. That's interesting. Echo cancellation is on. Should I turn it off? Well, I wouldn't do that. do that. Oh no, that's worse. <laughs> Shit. Oh dear. Hey, it wouldn't be a uh, craft beer channel without a little bit of. Uh, do you do you remember the live show we did with uh, We Are Beer, where something overheated? I think in the first like five minutes. Yeah, it was terrible. It's oh, really... Real panic stations, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. Um, do you want to chuck me out and then back in? Because I'm definitely getting echo. People are saying. Hello? Is enough time? Hello? Oh, fuck. There's a bit of echo. Tell you what, it, it's possibly me with my fancy microphone. Um Give me one second. I'm going to switch my audio and see if that fix it. Sorry, everyone at home. Um, right. Oh, is that switch my camera? No. Hello? Is this Better. Can't hear myself now. No echo. There we go. Okay. So it's something to do with my microphone picking up your audio. There we go. Problem solved. Uh, right. Where were we in the questions? Uh, Beer Smith. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I was reaching for. Um Huge congrats, guys. What if he delivered to perfection? Well, I saw some errors in there, but probably you... <laughs> I'm so close to it now. I literally cannot enjoy it. I only started enjoying the New England documentary about a year ago. Well, we did a watch party about 18 months ago, and I enjoyed watching it then. Hang on. Uh, go back to Jen's comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, she's just she's just had a oh. nephew. Congratulations, Jen. That's amazing news. Yeah. While, while we were broadcasting. 
Wow. We're, really? we're like curry. You know, it's supposed to hurry it along. Congrats, Jen. And hey, I love Norwich. <laughs> um the music so we the music is free uh youtube has an amazing audio library in which we've discovered the great otis mcdonald mm -hmm. um it just makes incredible sort of he, he's a producer on the west coast and he just makes incredible like remixes of and samples of, of mostly sort of hip-hop um hip-hop jazz and, and different things like that and he just makes killer music and he's pretty much all we use um and he's amazing and i message him lots telling him how much i love him and he's only replied once that's cool though um it's coming to ireland mick Brew. dude you're way ahead i've got ah, to deal with once hey. beforehand sorry Blimey. you know i'm dyslexic johnny i'm just trying to like read everything it's really hard i can't well, put my well, glasses well, on because it just looks real creepy with the glasses on there's like too much reflection going on so um it doesn't look like they're shaded somehow uh, yeah it look really odd the light in here is bizarre and i've turned off all of my crazy green lights and i still mm. look Tangerine. It's a joy in the garden tea light. I can, mate, if you like it, you can bloody have it back, mate. I'll I'll tell you. Alexa, I'll get back. Um, um, what was the most surprising thing you learned while making the documentary? Go on, Bradley. Um, that's the most surprising thing we learned. I mean, the, the horrors of the East India Company was pretty, I wouldn't say surprising, but like the, you know, the kind of depth that we got from David was shocking. And, you know, all, all the sort of stuff about the Desi pubs and Smedic uh, and how, you know, the, the kind of uh, the, the color bar stuff, all of that is just disgusting. And it's kind of hard to believe that that was only, what, 40 or 50? How many years ago? Was that in the 70s? I've totally lost track of time. Anyway, the color bar and all that stuff is obviously disgusting. And um, to think that it was going on almost within my lifetime, is shocking. Um, and, you know, I, I love all this, you know, the sort of direct, direct action that the people took to kind of change stuff. I thought that was amazing. Need a bit more of that these days to uh, kick out this stupid government and uh, get something better in. <sighs> anyway. Yes, it does, it does feel like our activism falls on deaf ears more these days. But I don't know. I mean, we think that, but it would have taken decades to get to the point where these people were able to do the, the amazing things that they did. I also um, like the cryogenic lab. I thought that was great. <laughs> I thought that might come up. I said, wow, about a million times in a very Owen Wilson, wow, kind of way, because I was just blown away by it. I thought it was excellent. I mean, it was, it was you know, they had a substantial door. Did that, did that make the cut where I go, that's a, that's a big door? In, in, uh, impressive door, or that's yes. yeah, oh, it's like that. in, I can't quite remember if it got cut on that. I was in the documentary, don't you worry. I kept all the important lines, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great door, it's probably one of the a best. Man naked under a lab coat talking about yeah. doors being impressive. It was in a handful of content. All right, come on. <laughs> um, do you think it do you think trying to work this to sorry, uh, do you think trying to work this to modern IPA idea? Is the best use of the ingredients? Is it a bit of a loaded term? Um, I think it was, mean, more, it was. It was more of a. It was kind of a philosophy, right? We went into this to try and reinvent something, and in doing that, it has to be a modern approach. You can't be hung up on the rules or anything like that. You've got to just go. What are the best things we can put into this? What are the best techniques? What can we look back into the past to take forward into the future? So I think modern is is a, a, a fine sort of terminology for it. I think it was a modern approach. We we threw out the rule book. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, if, if you mean, like, is, is it the best use of the ingredients to try and make something modern? A hundred percent. You know, we, we these new hops that are being grown are fantastic for for modern beers uh they're designed to be for modern beers um and you know the yeast that are being used in new england ipa right now are all old british yeasts um that have been you know initially so like um, the um the yeast that's used in heady topper by the alchemist is the old boddington's yeast we think so 
yeah, history, just because it is an old ingredient, it doesn't mean it can't be used uh, for modern techniques, for modern reasons. So what we were trying to do here is, is to make an English IPA that would appeal to modern palates. And while that meant that we probably have to change the hopping regimes, probably meant that we'd have to do something a little bit different with the yeast, even if we use the same yeast, um, it was super important that we still had, had had that link and used some of those old school ingredients. And hey, Chevalier, I think, is going to be um, a really popular malt. You know, I really wouldn't be surprised if eventually Crisp have to stop just doing it on the floor maltings and bring it into the big plant and grow more of it. There'll obviously be a limit because it's got terrible yield and all this kind of stuff, but there's huge interest in it for any malt forward style and malt forward styles are getting more popular again uh, with sort of the revival of, of British brewing. So um, yeah, I think it was the absolute best thing you could do with these modern hops, an amazing thing you could do with Chevalier to show what it can do and a great way to show to people that yeast is undying and always relevant and, and exciting. Um, oh, we've had a, had a super chat. Thank you, Django. Uh, really looking forward to watching your documentary. I love your long-form documentaries and hope to see more. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I hope we have more as well. If you missed our one about American hops, that came out about two months ago. Um, much more simple premise. Uh, lots more Zoom calls. But it, uh, I think it came out super well as well. Um, right, where are we? Where are we? Looking for questions. Uh, I'm curious about how long it took Charles Farum's uh, to develop new varieties compared to your hot documentary, where it's clear to YTH a very long time to establish a new variety. Yeah, I mean, there's no shortcuts in breeding of hops. Well, I mean, there are, but you're going to probably end up releasing terrible hops. So um, it took about 10 years for YCH to develop a lot of their hops. In the UK, they were doing it a tiny bit quicker. Um, I think they said it, it's generally about eight years for them to go from the original cross um, to sort of a proper harvest. Probably one of the main reasons, one of the main, one of the great reasons about that is, you know, our, our, our climate, but also the volumes they have to grow them in are much smaller. Um, so, yeah, I think that probably explains why it's a little bit quicker, but also there's probably a little bit of it's got to be quicker. You know, like the only reason that we don't have lots of amazing modern UK hops is because we literally started it later. You know, the US stumbled across these big aromatic hops much, much earlier and started producing, you know, the Cascade was the fifth, late 50s it was first crossed. You know, that's how much of a head start they've had. So it's definitely a case of the UK rushing to catch up. And so, yeah, same with um, with Germany as well. Um, Germany's probably a little bit ahead of the UK and has some really great modern hops coming out. Um, next questions. Uh, when are you guys coming to Ireland? Uh, that's been that's been in the plan for a long time, uh, and we've never quite made it um, due to like having children, documentaries, pandemics. Um, it's very much in the plan. We had a very brief Instagram conversation with the Guinness Guru, who's up for a collab. So hopefully that will happen eventually. And that sounds like as good an excuse to go over to Ireland to Ireland as any. But we've been meaning to come for a long time, and we we genuinely love to because we've had some amazing beer from over there. I am supposedly of Irish heritage, and I've never been to Ireland, so I need to. Yeah, you keep telling yourself. Uh, oh, sorry, that's not a question for us. That's a question for somebody else. Um, when are the glasses and merch coming out, uh, Bradley? There's already merch available. You can buy multiple T-shirts from our Teespring store as we speak. Uh, what specifically would you like? We are sort of thinking about the glassware. I feel like it's a big investment, Johnny, with uh, with everything going on. Like, If we could guarantee we get a bunch of people buying it, I'd be more up for producing it. But it's going to cost us like thousands, right, to get it made. And then warehousing and stuff like that. Yeah, we're working on a solution. Um, may maybe something like a Kickstarter is a good idea. We can just get people to literally pay up front through Kickstarter. Well, it probably wouldn't be Kickstarter. It's probably a more simple website for that where you just pay in advance. And then, you know, once we know we've got 400 people that want a glass, we can press beep and get them made. Um, but yeah, we're, we're working on We want to do something this year is the plan. 
it was going to be earlier, but then we did two documentaries over the summer and my eyes haven't not been bloodshot since May. So we will get it done. We promise. Um, Dr. Sam, I'm interested in historical recipes from the 19th century. It was at a brew day at the Malt Miller at the weekend when Mark showed a Chevalier Malt. Can you recommend us all some recipes? It's tricky because um, as, uh, as Martin said in the documentary, the, the recipes that we have don't really talk about varieties. It's literally throw in your hops, throw in your malts, um so you know we've got temperatures timings gravities but not necessarily varieties so we know that probably chevalier if it was a good brewery a brewery that had the the the, the budget in the products uh and probably goldings although they wouldn't have known it was goldings um damn it what is going on here it's your uh, fancy uh, camera setup johnny That's all the is. technical difficulties today um we you gods what's happening I've we've been back johnny is now officially locked out of uh the affairs and may is taking over from clarkson oh he's back here we go so now i'm just on the mac i don't know what's happening here but uh maybe a cable's letting me down or something what's but, happening uh... is your your brudio is so hot where you're maxing out the heat in there. The heat was like down the, to 19 now. The camera's I'm, I'm single-handedly responsible for yeah, global yeah, warming, I'm afraid. That's it. Um, also, yeah, hey, I've managed... The police to... helicopter's flying over your broodio and it thinks you've got a grow house in there. That's how hot your broodio is. <laughs> uh, right, where where were we? Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up that particular comment. It just happened in a bag. Um, what, what was the question we were on, Bradley? Uh, I don't know. Someone said I should go to Wicklow. Um, Zander 10 said me specifically should come to Wicklow. There's mountains like mountains, beer, potine, wool, some of which is legal and a bit weakened. There's also golly fishing. I don't know what golly fishing is. Where, what's golly what, fishing, Zander? What's this got to do with anything? I don't know. I think I've just oh, been okay. invited to go to Wicklow by <laughs> Zander, though. So cool. I'm coming to Wicklow. Right, Brad's Brad's going to go to Wicklow after this. I found the comment we were on. Basically, yeah. um, Ron Patterson's probably got lots of recipes uh, where you might just need to fill in what the actual ingredients are, but the processes will be there. Um, would you make a single hot beer of any of these? Um, I think, uh, in fact, I know Harlequin and Olicana would be capable of it. Um, Jester... I don't know, because Jester, as we discussed in that tasting in the documentary, it's really powerful. Um, and I think probably you'd need other stuff to, to balance it out. Um, so yes to those two. Jester, I think, needs to play a, a secondary role to some more um, uh, balanced profile hops, a little bit less sharp. Um Yes. So this is something which, in retrospect, if I could go back, I would fix a little bit in the documentary. The idea was that we were taking English IPA and creating British IPA. So for us, a British IPA is the modern version. So it's bringing in potentially ingredients from all over Britain. It's also talking about Britain as one wonderful nation rather than uh, the English taking the credit all of the time. Um, so obviously back then they probably were all English breweries. Like uh, Des said, one in four pints in Britain were brewed in England. Uh, sorry, brewed in Burton, let alone England. Uh, but now we, we want to say that that's definitely not the case. Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland all have incredible IPA brewing uh, scenes. So we wanted to call it British and, and not English. So sorry if that wasn't wasn't quite clear in the documentary. Um, questions, questions, questions. Uh, this is an interesting comment from Ben. He said, before the delivery of the Now IPA ride tonight, I went to a local bottle shop to search for British hot beers. Even the owner struggled to source a single beer. Um, cool. You know, that, that's what we're up against. You know, we've had this incredible boom in craft beer and it hasn't touched, hasn't touched the UK, the UK farm, uh, hop farming industry. It's just, um, you know, they have to bear some responsibility for that for not being on top of it, for not starting their breeding programs until very late in the day. But something's happened where we consider British hops boring. And I don't really know whose, whose fault that is. Maybe it's, you know, cast qualities 
not just affected car sales, it's affected love of British ingredients as well. It's a weird one, isn't it? Because we all we all fetishize, you know, amazing little craft British breweries, but like we're not fetishizing ingredients in the same way. When there's still the care and there's still the craft there, it's the amazing flavors. Um, but we're, I, I guess it's is it a kind of it's a messaging thing and it's a sort of expectation thing as well. Like you see American hop names on a on a can, you're going to be like, I know what I'm getting with that. Whereas some of these new experimental British hops, you don't necessarily know what you're getting, and it's maybe got the stigma of not being as sort of big and juicy as its sort of um, American counterparts, which we're, mm -hmm. you know, we're sort of trying to help change that a little bit. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And, yeah, there was some hesitation when we were coming up with this idea for the documentary of do we, if we want to help British hop farms, is the best thing to do to be like, hey, we can be like America, you know? Um, and in the end, we decided that, A, yes, but B, also that, that there's going to be, enough difference between between the hops of the us and the uk that it's not really just saying we want to be like america it's saying we want to take inspiration from them um but it is you know that reputational damage has been done to old school british hops and i think it is starting to be undone by interest in classic british styles but it's going to take a long long time and it's it's never going to reach i don't i don't think anybody thinks that goldings fuggles Bramling Cross are ever gonna, you know, form the bulk of the British hop growing scene again. Ever, they're always going to be a niche product now, and so British hop growers and and breeders and distributors are all focusing on producing m modern, juicy, highly aromatic varieties, not the sort of the noble, the spicy, the hedgerowy kind of fruits, which is a bit of a shame. But so long as that niche remains, um, and actually on that note. Are we going to make any more cast documentaries? Yes. Uh, yes, we are. So um, <clears throat> we've designed the next series of Keep Cask Alive. It is not in production yet, but it, it hopefully will be very soon. Um, and we've been working behind the scenes on our UNESCO project, which is a long project. It's going to take years and years for us to get that UNESCO uh, accreditation. But we're here for the long term. We know it needs to happen. So hopefully, um, hopefully it will. Um, Xander asks, do you think the English IPA resurgence will bring an increase in cast popularity or is that unlikely? I mean, firstly, that there isn't a resurgence yet. That's what we're hoping this documentary will bring, I guess. Uh, certainly not on its own, but hopefully a resurgence of English hops in IPAs could help cast, cast popularity because hopefully, you know, lots of cast brewers won't use American hops. They think that they're hipster nonsense and you know maybe if there's english versions they might start to so i'm hoping that it will at the very least blur the the boundaries between the two formats uh stuart evans just said hashtag fug life fug life that it's was a, a tiny rebel beer back in the day mm. was it um yeah it was yeah um so we refs, how did they come up with the hop names? Yeah, this is sad. We had to cut this. We did have that discussion with Will during the hop sniffing, uh, but that had to go for reasons of longevity. Uh, Jester was the best story, um, which was that um, when the, the hop breeder got his first, basically, so they have thousands of plants. They pick some, some of the ones that are most interesting ar aroma-wise. And so the hop breeder at Charles Farron did that, took it to the MD of Charles Farron, in a jar and the, the MD was on the phone um, and he sort of, he took the, took the jar and sniffed at it. And in his head, he was like, well, that's an American hop. Um, and when he got off the phone and the breeder said like, no, that's, that's one of our new English varieties. He thought that he was having a joke. Um, so they called it Jester. And that's um, where all the other kind of names came from because they're descendants as well. Right. So they're all kind of Joker themed to an extent. Yeah, Harlequin was and um, I can't remember the story of the diver. Mystic was um, Will was saying that he'd been, they'd been walking around these thousands of plants and they're sort of picking them, sniffing them, seeing if anything's worth taking back to the office, having a think about. And they've been doing it for hours and he turned to the hot breeder and uh, the hot breeder was like, let's go for a pint. Fuck it. We're not going to find one today. And um, 
Will said, I've got a good feeling about this next plant. And the next plant was Mystic. Um, so they called it that as if he kind of could he, know. He also said Mystic was his favourite, but I think it was hardest to grow or it had the least um, bountiful sort of uh, growth. Le least hot resistance. Uh, uh, yeah. Blight resistance, I think, yeah. So it basically is Mystic because it's like vapour. It's sort of brilliant, but they can't grow it. It's hard to grow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Stuart says, I was surprised to see me time using a Browmeister for recipe development. Do you know if that's normal? Yes, it is. So they've got they've got their Browmeister that they do trial stuff on. They've got their pilot kit, which I think is about 10 hectolitres that they do small batch brews for the tap room and bigger tests on. And then they've got the 75 hectolitre kit for, for the main brews. Uh, Johnny says we missed a super chat. Yeah, we've just got a super chat from... Uh, oh, no, there's, there's another one. Oh, oh really? No, there's Django... Le 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 Olivia, right at the bottom. Wait, but Johnny did one. Johnny did one. Oh. Sorry about that, Johnny. We found it. Uh, congrats on the documentary. Really enjoyed it. Might be a bit obvious, but a feature length in Belgium would be great. It would be great. It would be great. Yeah, definitely. That. So I haven't been to Belgium now since 2017, I think. I've never is... been with the channel, so right. we need to make this happen. We need to we make do. this happen. Um, and well, it's uh, a Eurostar adventure. I, I think we could have a great road trip potentially, um, or a bicycle slash driving trip might be interesting. We definitely, definitely will be uh, will be making it. Uh, but yeah, not not for a little while because uh, of other stuff that's going on. But we will get there. It, it used to be such a big part of the channel. Belgian beer is still one of my greatest passions and. Uh, yeah, it's a real shame we haven't managed it. Uh, we did Django, and then we've got another brand new one. Olivia, just want to say thanks thanks for sharing so much and educating eager beer Luddites like me in the most fun way possible. Thank you so much, and thank you very much for the super chat. I'm, I'm Absolutely. always, uh, this sounds super silly, but always delighted and amazed that people will sit down for 90 minutes and watch what we do. That still never gets old. It's quite special so thank you um god i'm getting so far behind bradley um we're getting I'm lots of people saying brad bus and belgium coach trick <laughs> it's damn it's brad the, bus it's not an idea i'm trying to kill this idea it's a live show favorite topic we should have had that as a banner at the bottom the brad bus <laughs> it always comes up uh yeah, I, I'm still up for it, but it probably would be a logistical nightmare. Um, yeah, I think it'd be fun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the sensible one has spoken. I mean, mate... <sighs> We've got another super chat, Johnny. I just, the, oh, God. The reason I say there will be no Brad bus is because I know that it'll be me that has to organise it and probably me that will drive. Um Wait, neither of us are driving. We're getting like it'll be like coach trip, like the Channel Four show, and we're gonna get vote vote people off the bus who we like least, right? And then new contestants will come on, and they have to bring like beers with them, and then we all have like a bottle share on the bus, and it, and at the end of the day we vote somebody out, and then they have to make their uh, own way back, maybe. That's I voted Brad off. Bastard. The power <laughs> of having control of this is quite annoying. <laughs> They're, finding on, solutions, yeah. They're finding solutions. <laughs> we had we had a we had another super chat, Johnny. Don't miss it. I'm coming back to it. I'm coming back to it. There we go. There we go. Excellent stuff, guys. I'd love to see you explore other lesser known styles from outside the UK, such as Stein beer or Rauch beer from Bamberg. That's also been, I mean, we we were literally, when pa when the pandemic hit, we were literally planning and booking our Bamberg trip uh, mm -hmm. to film there. So, yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, the only question is when, because um, that, that's been that's been the next trip for years now. Um, but, yeah, uh, we've got lots of people asking if we can ship the beer to the US, and I, I'm afraid I don't think that meantime we're doing that. Um as far as I, as far as I know, I don't even go to the EU because our government has made it so so hard to export beer 
uh, in any in small volumes, it's basically impossible now because of the deals that they've been signing and the things that they've been doing. So basically, UK breweries are fucked for export. Um, maybe one day they'll fix it. Who knows? Um, I mean, this is bonkers. Loving it, but I have to go grab breakfast and go to work. Thanks, Tenchman. From Australia, right? Tech man. I think that might be Australia. Yeah, that is... Uh, that is Tench man. Do you like Tench? You're called Tench man. Like Tench the fish Tench. Or is it some other thing? I used to have a Tench in a fish tank in my bedroom when I was younger. I'm not sure it, it was a fish tankable fish, but I had one. What you... Tench is a kind of fish. It's like a... It's like a Freshwater fish, and I had one in a fish tank, Johnny. All right. <laughs> it wasn't very big. I had yeah, all most surprising things. things I've learned during making this documentary is that. There you go. Tenchman. Tenchman, respect though. Like you're going for breakfast now. That is incredible. Um <laughs> amazing. Thank you um, for coming. Thank you for getting up so early. Yeah, 4 a.m. I think you said it was. Um Crazy. From the Siren Dock, it took a while to get from Centennial to Simcoe and then the Almighty Citro. Do you think UK hops will get to that point in the next five, ten years? Uh, so as we said, they're doing it a little bit quicker. But also, yeah, it's, it's worth noting that uh, Centennial and Cascade were very much accidents. Uh, Simcoe and Citro were very much resisted and then people got excited about them years later. So um, the UK hop industry is going to move a lot lot faster than than you saw in that documentary about american hops whether it's going to be fast enough i don't know because yeah we've lost we lost four hop farms last year um so we've just got to hope that there's more stuff in those breeding programs that's going to be amazing uh a lot of people in the uk are trying to not a lot some in the uk um are trying to grow american hops here as sort of a a shortcut essentially um that comes with all kinds of issues. You can grow. I think there's UK Chinook and there's UK Cascade. The, the issue with the UK Cascade, which is actually very quite good sort of sensory wise, is that you Cascade, you harvest very late. And in the UK, our climate is incredibly unreliable. So if you happen to harvest that in early October, you could well be into frost. You could well be into floods. Um, uh, there's a cat. It's Jeff. <laughs> it's the star of the show. She's come to pay a visit. Sorry. Uh, sorry to derail you there, Johnny. But she's uh, snapping mm -hmm. away at my feet, just putting it on my lap. <laughs> snapping uh, away at your feet. Tench man is tench because of the fish. So there you there go. You go. That's right. So did, did tench have a fish, tent, uh, fish tank? It's, it probably catches and kills them, I imagine. But, oh. you know, nobody's perfect, eh? <laughs> Maybe they're delicious. Um... Uh, it was it was it was delicious. I don't even like fish, but you know, I I uh, I eat all of my pets. Oh right. No, I don't. No, I don't. Sorry, that's a bit weird. Not, not much meat on Jeff. No, well, she's quite fat, but yeah. Oh, is she? It's just yeah. the hair. The lack of it's hair really is. Uh... Fat, yeah. 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 Um, what's your favourite British ale, Brad? Um, favourite British ale. I do like a landlord. I do like um, London Pride. I like a lot of little things from Kent that when they, you know, they come on from little breweries, I don't even know who they are, but I drink them quite a lot when I'm in Margate. Little, little guys. What's your favourite, Johnny? Uh, <laughs> is that is that your cat making that noise? Yeah, yeah. No, it was my stomach. I'm quite hungry. No, yeah, it was Jeff. She's very temperamental. <laughs> Um, if I if I were walking in to a pub, the things I really want to see are probably Harvey's best. Um, so I'll still proper job. I think it's brilliant on cask. Um, full of ZSB, I absolutely love. Five points best, of course. Yeah, best is, is great. Cracker. Uh, yeah, those are probably my top three on cask. Um, yeah, and I mean, everything that Harvey's make, I absolutely love. Um, so even if it's not on cask, like the bottles of the Imperial Stout and stuff like that, I just love what, what Miles makes down there. Um, 
Mean question, but may we address the macro in the room? Any qualms working with Asahi? Obviously, for a wonderful cause. But hey, it's, <laughs> it's devil's advocate time, eh? Um, yeah, we can address that. So we have at the Craft Beer Channel, we have a thing called the Blacklist which is a document that I have, which um, has breweries that we won't work with. They're the black, uh, the gray list, which is breweries that we would consider working with if it's for a good cause. Um, if it's in collaboration with like somebody we really respect, really like, who is very, you know, ethical. Um, and then we have the, the, the white list, which is most breweries, you know, where, where we have no issue working with them. Um, green list, we call it green list for go. But then it wouldn't fit with the monochrome black, grey, white. Okay, I see, I see. And you clearly got green on the brain today, Brad. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so there's there's only one macro brewery uh, on the whitelist, and that's Asahi. We've got absolutely no reason to think that they've acted in, inappropriately, inethically, in, in any way, shape, or form, which is very different to most macro breweries. Um, they've supported everything that we've done. They've supported a lot of the breweries that we love. You know, they own uh, two of my favorite breweries in the world, which is Fuller's uh, and Pilsner Raquel, and have done, by all accounts, internal and external, a brilliant job with those those breweries since they took them over. Um, so, yeah, so so as long as uh, we're never made aware of any reason why we shouldn't work with Asahi, we, we'd, we'd work with them every time. Um, it's... It's an interesting game to play, to be a content creator in a, in a very small niche, and particularly a very small niche where most of the conversations you have are about people being unable to make money or grow or actually finance their job. So Brad and I have a lot of discussions about who we can work with, what kind of work we can do. Um, and yeah, take, take it really seriously and do a lot of research into the companies that we uh, might or might not work with. Um, the The list... Look, every time we mention it, people say, like, you should publish the list. That's a one-way ticket to getting our ass sued. Um, so it is, it is a private document. But the idea behind it is that if you ever see a company on the craft beer channel, you can trust that they are ethical. Um, occasionally, we um, feature breweries that aren't, but we'll always flag it in the video. And occasionally, obviously, things come to light after we publish stuff, um, such as with BrewDog. We did, you know probably 10 videos of BrewDog over the 10 years that we've been around. And now on every single one, you'll find a disclaimer at the top of every comment that explains what BrewDog have been accused of, what they've done about it, what our views on it are, um, and why you should look at this video in, in a different light. Um, and that's our policy going forward for breweries where things, uh, things aren't as they seem because we think that we should be leaving this stuff up there so that people can make up their own minds, essentially. But we'll always put our views out there. Um, yeah. I don't know if you have anything to add, Brad, but that's sort of my No, view. I mean, that goes to me as well. I, I you know, we, we shouldn't be working with or championing anyone who is acting untoward or uh, has been found to be, um, you know, less than, uh, than um, lovely. You know, everyone we work with. I think you know. I think the thing with Asahi is, with with Fuller's and with uh, Bill's and Urkel, they, they 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 seem like they're pretty hands off. Like they just they're kind of guarding these great brands. I don't see them like influencing it in a bad way since they've had ownership. So the beer is still amazing, and you know everything is sort of business as usual. That's my sort of perspective with with how they kind of uh, own and operate uh, the brands that they do. And I don't have any qualms about sort of working with them. Wow, that's a big super chat. Boom. Thank you, Bruno Dave. Thanks for sharing over the years. Have a point on me. Thank you very much, Thank Dave. You. That's great. Um, thanks, man. Thanks for watching everything that, that we've... Uh... That we've done we had so when we announced that this was happening and obviously it's been a, a huge deal for us like the biggest project we've, we've ever undertaken we had lots of people say like oh i've been here since the start i remember when there were three of you and just delighted to see that uh see us growing and that's yeah i mean this is the best best year we've had i think from a content and a financial perspective um it is it is a full-time job now which is do you, do you think we're 
No, it's amazing. It's amazing. Do you think we're both slowly morphing into Jim as we get older? <laughs> we're becoming the man that we left behind. Yeah, like the two of us when we combine. Oh, that's difficult. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. I felt like it'd be easier. <laughs> Fuck, why is that so difficult? I must be drunk. What am I doing? Sorry, this is really hard. You need to straight... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now come towards me. I can't. But I've got, what do you I've mean you can't? The I've reached the limit of my... I'm on a deck chair. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was silly. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's what Jim looked, looked like. He basically... Actually, like I, mean, I probably have. Like, probably minus the glasses. Bold and bearded. You're, uh, you don't sound like you're from Essex. That's the problem. No. I could probably sound like I'm from Essex if I tried harder. South London and Essex are weirdly similar, aren't they? Yeah. Well, a lot of people from London moved to Essex, I would say. Because I think a lot of Essex accents sound a bit like Suffolk accents when you actually get out in the sticks. I feel like they're more of a sort of country vibe. But the sort of Essex that we've all come to know and love on television is more like a sort of Cockney um, vibe. I don't know. I'm probably talking out of my ass, but having been to Essex and having had a few Essex girlfriends over the years, uh, uh, my girlfriend is currently my current. Sorry, my partner is from Essex. Got to be careful with what I say here, but um, you know, it's just to me. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, sound like you. No, she sounds like she's from Essex. She's got a way more extreme Essex accent than I have. <laughs> I don't know whether Father Earth is a lawyer, but he he's advising we don't publish uh, the blacklist. Well, yeah, um, that's why it's called the blacklist, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little um, black book of uh, destruction. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, thank you for the question. Like, I we'd rather answer this than than have people sort of sat there wondering. So, thank you, Simon and Alana, and thanks for coming uh, to the 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 screening as well. And I hope you have fun on your uh, UK adventures. Um, is it going to be a live Christmas show, Bradley? Hell yeah, I imagine so. We always do one, right? Always, always. It's I, mean, I don't think we've we missed one. Box we got to get a nice box together so people can uh join us. We've we've kind of we've been so busy with all of this documentary and other things going on. It's just been a very busy summer, but we need to get back to doing a, f a few more live shows, don't we? Really. Um, yeah, I mean that definitely fell off the radar when we got really busy this year, um, yeah. and we have it's had a lot of people be like, "When are the live shows?" Yeah, yeah, um, it's 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 quite a democrat. Well, I say it's a democratic thing, but it's not really because if you don't live in the UK, you probably can't buy the beers to drink along with us. But in the spirit of Christmas, it'd be great if we did a box that was like widely available beers. That are, I mean, it would just be Delirium Christmas, basically. If we just get eight bottles of Delirium Noel. Just get fucked after about ten minutes. We can't. Speak. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a long live stream. <laughs> but uh, I mean, everyone can get hold of that beer because it's made in monstrous quantities. Um, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe some banana a, Christmas people can get hold of that. If you do a beer geek style Christmas beer box, which is full of widely available beers. So what's so like Sierra Nevada Pale and yeah. Yeah, potentially. We did. I, I tried. I'll, I'll tell you this because I don't think it's going to happen. I tried so hard to do a Sierra Nevada live show. I just couldn't get it over the line because I was like, everybody can get hold of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale in most countries in the world now. If you've got a beer scene, somebody's importing Sierra Nevada Pale. But yeah, I just couldn't couldn't get them interested enough. Um, but may, I don't know, maybe one day. Maybe one day. One day. Yeah. He's not a lawyer. He's just got common sense. You're right. Um, any plans for a live blind tasting? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely stuff I could do with like like some some blind tastings. Um, one thing that I suggested on our Discord forum, uh, our Discord forum. If you don't know what Discord is, it's basically an online chat room, and all of us Patreon supporters get access to it. There's about 300 beer geeks chatting away every day in there, so you can support the channel. Oh no, wait, that's the wrong bloody banner. That's the right banner. Uh, from $2 a month, you get access to that and you can chat away to us all day and we share ideas and you can share ideas with us um, and increasingly memes of me looking ridiculous. Um, 
but I mentioned this a couple of days ago in, in the Discord that um, basically I have like three, four hundred bottles of beer, cans of beer at home now, probably more than that. Um, and I've been trying to work out what I can do with it because I just I've, I'm never going to get through it. So my plan is, and I don't know if Brad wants to come for these sessions to like one once a month do like a drink Johnny stash dry live show where I just crack open old bottles of beer. And if it's good, I'll keep drinking it. And if it's terrible, I'll chuck it away and, you know, tell people about it and take questions and generally get a bit messed up on YouTube. Interesting. We've, we, uh, I mean, we'll talk off, we'll talk off camera, but we had a, we had an offer this week that that could, that could work as part of uh, the thing we were emailed about this week. Thank you. (laughs) What's this new thing of you mentioning things I don't remember? Oh no, okay. You know, uh, I'm oh, I don't. I don't know whether we could brought. We'll talk about that off air. Maybe, maybe it will be in different venues. Um, yeah, potentially or a charity auction. I mean, the beer is. I mean, it's obviously safe for consumption, but I don't think whether it's good for consumption. I think a lot of it, apart from the lambics and the non-adjuncted imperial styles, most of it's going to be terrible. There'll be a bus, okay? We'll we'll find a way to make the bus happen, all right? Uh, um, yeah, I don't really... I think I said it earlier, but it, basically the Bra- it's called the Brad bus, but it'll be me that organises it. You know, that's why I'm resisting this. Well, no, we've, we've had people offer to help us organise it and stuff in the past. That's the thing. I can't remember who, because I'm not organised. I'm terrible. <laughs> I've probably got notes of it. So I know I'm we've not. had people offer... Um, uh, talking about stuff being over expired, Johnny, to go off on a slight tangent. Um, do you know John Wilson, a d- sort of like strange filmmaker? He's bas- basically, there's now on BBC iPlayer. I've been trying to watch this series called How To with John Wilson for the last couple of years since I watched a couple of episodes stoned around my friend Jim's house, and he basically um documents everything he walks around with a camera documents everything um and it, and it'll be like how to dis- the, the, uh, an episode will be called how to dispose of your batteries and then it'll go off on these mad tangents around new york city meeting all sorts of different people and putting very poetic shots of like dead squashed rats on the floor and like things blowing about in the wind and you know it's all this sort of like geeky voiceover stuff um, it's brilliant. But anyway, he in one of the episodes, he meets a man who really enjoys eating really, really expired military rations. So him and John Wilson eat this 1960s um, army r- ration food and he gets a kettle and puts boiling water on this rice and beef thing that's about how old is that from the 60s? I don't know. 50 years old, whatever it is. Yeah. They rehydrate it and then they eat it. And the guy is like, hmm, hmm, palatable. He's like, this is about the best you can hope for with um, expired ration packs. But he said, this is a good one. And then he eats a bit and it's gristly. And he's like, oh, I've got a bit of gristle there. And he's sort of commenting in this really fucking odd way. But this that's what he does for fun. He eats these ration packs. Very odd. So uh, how, do we, how do we get onto this? Sorry, you were talking about your beers maybe being past their best. Somewhere. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, anyone, there won't be any gristle. After you've watched this, go and look out for John Wilson. How to with John Wilson? It's if you like Nathan Fielder, um, go and check out John Wilson. It's absolutely yeah, subscribe to Nathan Fielder. Is yeah. uh, we had a super chat to bring it back to what tonight's been about. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, so hyped, proud, and happy for you guys. You've genuinely excelled yourselves. Um, thanks. Um, I'm still too close to it to process that lovely comment, or indeed whether the film's any good. I literally have no no idea at this point. Um, there there was a moment. I, Brad's probably uh, on the other side of the phone where I was just like done with it. I was like, I don't think it's very good. I don't think it's very interesting. I think it's too nerdy. Um, you can get very it. introspective making a 90 minute documentary about one beer. I mean, I, I, yeah, you must have had some 
some uh, some sort of middle of the night moments when your baby woke you up and just questioning everything, right? Because Johnny never edits, to my edits, wife, but a lot of the time spent rocking my daughter was also thinking, I need to make that edit to that scene or else this isn't going to pan out here. The, the, so, what we want to know, Johnny, is are you ever like rocking a papoose and you're taking her out to the broodio while you're editing and that? Of a mid, you know, like when it's like three in the morning, are you going out <laughs> with the baby? No, no, I think oh. I think oh. that would lose me serious husband points. Just would it? I mean, on and cruising out into the garden in the middle of the night, take your baby to work. Night. Uh, <laughs> <of the night. laughs> no, no, I, I do the work up here at night and then forget it all by morning. Yeah, um, yeah. It, 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 I mean, she she was a distraction, my daughter, if I'm honest. Because you can see from my double doors of the studio, you can see my house double doors. And my daughter likes to, she can stand now, like lean up against the French doors of my house and just stare at me as if I'm being a terrible father. By being... Yeah, I do that too, out the front of your house sometimes. <laughs> just staring in. I stare in. Just you can come around the back if I don't answer the front door. I'm, I've already moved in. In the middle of the night, I'm in the I'm in the broodia. It's warmer. It's much warmer. Oh, that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah, you drink sorry. some of the beer? I've got too much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a um, There was a question about IPA that I saw. Oh, here we go. Uh, what do you think the next big evolution in IPA will be? Or do you think a different style could break through into the mainstream? I mean, obviously, the next big evolution in IPA is going to be English IPA. Right. You, just you have want, to, go just back to go forward. You're looking right? back to go forward, yeah. Exactly. Um, it finds a way. I mean, let, let's be honest, that's not what's going to happen. But I do genuinely think that in the next five years, there are going to be some stellar English hops coming out that are going to mean that we get finally a little sense of terroir back with English mm. IPA. So, with, sorry, with modern, modern American style IPAs using English hops. I think that will start to happen. Um, well, hang on. We're... What did you just say? You think we're gonna hang on? Did you just say we're gonna export British hops to America and they're gonna use them, or did you just say people are gonna be brewing American style IPAs with British hops over here? Well, I guess both that'd be great. Imagine that. Imagine yeah. that if it reaches a point where they're like, Oh, give us some of that and we're exporting it, that'd be amazing around the world. I, mean, I think it's bound to happen. Like, American brewers are famous for liking to experiment yeah. to push the boundaries and try new things, and I think they'll. They'll be interested in in the hops that we're making. Um, how much will actually go to the States, I don't know. I feel like certainly for the first 10, 20 years, it's going to be British breweries wanting to have, you know, that on their cans, that it's all British hops and stuff like that. Like, And I also think probably the future of IPA will not be what we just made, which is all English. It will be like what we had at Dig, where it was um, Cascade, Mosaic and Olicana you know, mixing in those hops because they're just another tool that the brewer can use. And that's why I think Holocan is the best of those ones that we tried because it's it's unique. You know, if you put Harlequin next to Mosaic, you probably won't know what's Mosaic and what's Harlequin. If you put Holocana next to Mosaic, you, you could start to pick it um, pick it apart and, and see what Holocana is adding. So I'm excited about Holocana as a hop. Um, any recommendations for low ABV hoppy beers, be they British of either coast or everything in between and beyond? Um, lots, uh, there's lots of great table beers. Um, Beak Lula is a fantastic table beer. Uh, Colonel make a great table beer. North make a great table beer. Um, Gads, if you're looking for something a little bit more traditional, they make fantastic low ABV beers. Dark Star Hophead is still great if we're going to go for the Asahi Cannon. Um, I had a really lovely one from Amity Brewing. It was 2.8%, like a little uh, little sort of crispy kind of American hot beer. It's what the UK is really, really good at, and we're going to see a lot more of them because if the proposed tax changes go through for ABV, uh, which would mean lower taxes on, on beers below 2.8%, I think, uh, then we're going to see lots more of those. So, yeah, check out those ones, and there should be lots more coming. Um, 
I saw another question. I saw another question. It was about books, I think, wasn't it? No, someone so, said, yeah. what am I going to write? Oh. Yeah, you're <laughs> going to write a book, Bradley? Uh, yeah, probably a kid's book, though, about beer. Um, no, not a kid's book. Not a kid's Don't book. make me vote you off the bus a again. Young, a young adult's book about beer. Go on. So, like, you know, uh, an 18-year-old's guide to not being able to afford to drink beer. Um. They don't, they don't drink beer, right? They all drink sort of other stuff these days. Hard seltzer. Hard seltzer, nitrous canisters, whatever they're up to. I don't know. But they're not drinking in pubs, apparently. So what, what's the book going to be? Oh, Is what's it my be... book going to be? Um, I've, I've told you about a few book ideas I've got. Which well, I thought that was a book idea. I want to know about that book. Oh, that book, that's not a book idea now. Just, oh. just, that's just being silly off the top of my head. No, I've got a few book ideas, but they're, they're deep in the archive. Um, they're, they're all, they're all solid gold hits. So I can't be uh, talking oh. about them live on air because they're, yeah. they're that good. They're wow. dynamite, mate. An absolute dynamite. You haven't even told they're... me. No, no. Uh, these are you good know, stuff. I... I um I had a call today. I haven't told you this yet, Bradley, but I have had an offer for book number four. Finally, um, right. So that was me. I was four... just Frank calling you. I was just. I was like, <laughs> was that you on the end of the phone? Yeah, yes, yeah, I'd yeah. like to buy your book for one million pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. That was me. Oh, damn. Yeah. I thought I had a million pounds. Well, you don't. I'm sorry about that. But it was funny. Lols. Yeah, we're all laughing now. <laughs> no, um, it wasn't. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Well, no, I, re- <laughs> I realise it wasn't you. Um, what do you mean? I'm pretty good. I'm a pretty good actor, Johnny. I've often thought I could be a good character actor, apart from the fact that I'm not good at acting. I've got a, I've got a face for like being a character actor. I reckon as I get older, I'm going to get grislier and greyer. Don't don't you have to be greyer. less? You're quite distinct looking. Don't you have to be less distinct to be a character? Car- mate, character actors are well distinct looking. Think of like uh, what's his name, Postle Thwaite. And like all the best character actors are like kind of weird looking, um, you know, oh, whatever, huh? I, f- I feel when I say I, f- I feel like you'd be typecast probably as a Viking, yeah, that's fine. I'm all right with that. I, t- well, I must have you told know how you how many before. Viking flicks need character actors. Well, I was maybe I'm, I'm overthinking this. I'm friends with uh, a guy whose wife was one of the main characters in Game of Thrones. And I did beg to be in Game of Thrones, and I they didn't put me in it. They yeah, didn't I feel me. like you could have made the cut there. Yeah. I wanted to be one of the Northmen, mate. I could have absolutely bossed that. I would have been brilliant. I would have pushed Jon Snow off the fucking wall, and then, you know, we would have had a different story right there. We would have. And we should have, because the story was terrible in the end. It, right? It was bloody dog shit. Who's watching uh, House of Dragons? I've Anyone? given up on it. Oh, Johnny, come on. It was very dull. Beer Hagrid, fuck off. <laughs> well, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Do you prefer Hips the Viking or yeah, Jack Black? Obviously, obviously. I mean, the Jack Black thing's also slightly offensive, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've put on a few pounds because I can't go swimming anymore. I I've, been, I've hurt my foot. I've hurt the tendon in my foot, so I can't ride my bicycle either. I'm hobbling like a motherfucker. Um, you know, just be kind. Don't call me a hangred. It's not nice. <laughs> I got feelings, you know. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Yeah. Um, right. I, f- I feel like we're running out of questions. Um, uh, did I answer this one? Oh, I said which was my favorite. Uh, I'd probably go Olicano for a single hopper. Um, yeah. Olicano. Would you go Olicano, Bradley? Olicano all the way, baby. Yeah, I think it's, it's the best one. Somebody um, said Brad's gone off of orange, and I just want to say, as a fact, I haven't gone off of orange, still one of my favourite colours. I just <laughs> happened to be wearing all green tonight because I just wanted to celebrate British hops, mate. I thought, I think, you know. You, 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 have been, uh, you have been wearing more green of late. Because I noticed in the documentary, you and I kept turning up in green. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I saw what you were doing with the green. I was like, I'm having the green. You're not, you back off <laughs> the green. Right. I've already got the orange. I'm claiming green now as well. Just back off. Well back off. Back off. You've got blue eyes. You should be wearing blue, mate. They make your eyes pop. Think Thanks. about that. Thanks, man. There you I'll, go. I'll go. I'll go back to blue. Maybe yeah, you should you make some blue back. merch for us. Okay. Yeah, that 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 will persuade me. That'll persuade me. Um, right, we're going to wrap it up very soon. So, if you've got any last questions or questions that I've missed, because sorry, the the comments were busier than I thought they were going to be. So, I apologise. I didn't stay on top of that too much. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, now is the time. Um, I think you might be right, Callum. I'm going to look that up, but if they did, uh, I bet it was great. Um, the question's not been answered on why no cast version. Uh, meantime, don't do cask. That's literally the only reason. Um, but we built the recipe and built the concept around the idea that it could be used for cask in case anybody else wanted to do something similar, or indeed in case we went back. So Asahi also owned Dark Star, so there's a little part of me that might be like, come on. Come on, Dark Star should do a do a cast version or something. Um, because I think it would work brilliantly on cask as a beer. Um, so maybe one day. Uh, what's the best supermarket beer you can pick up from Tesco or Sainsbury's? Um uh via Stefan, as we discovered. Um is an absolutely delicious beer, and you can get that in Sainsbury's. What was the line? Um History in a glass, but available in Sainsbury's. That's the one. Um, actually, I, Bradley, uh, I got us a little treat. So when we film our Oktoberfest episode, once we're done filming and we've drunk... Did you buy a chocolate egg, Johnny? No, I didn't buy you a chocolate egg. Why would I have bought you a chocolate egg? You said a little chocolate. treat. What? You said it. Yeah, but they're one pound in the supermarket right now. I've been, I've been observing them and walking past them every time, trying not to buy one. one you and pound. I are very different people. No, I bought <laughs> I bought us another Andex vice beer. Fuck yeah! Was that yeah. from a supermarket? That wasn't. From no, a no. This is because I put in the order with beer merchants to get the yeah. uh, the yeah, missing yeah. Uh, October. I managed to track down the Augustina one, which is pretty hard to do in the UK. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have some Andex. Uh, so yeah, via Stefan, uh, Northern Monk Faith is delicious. Um, anything by North? There's quite a few of those in the supermarkets now. Jaipur. Jaipur, of course. Pilsner Akel, of course. Um, in terms of like traditional real ale, like British, Oakham Citra all day, every day. Uh, or Timmy T's, proper job. Proper job in bottles, nowhere near as good as it is on cask. Uh, well, it's the same with Oakham Citra as well. But I can't wait to see London Black in ni Nitro. In Nitro cans. cans. That'd be Actually, easy. shit, in um, Waitrose you can get Broken Dream Nitro in cans from Siren, which is a Bloody amazing beer. Yeah. Um, not as sessiony at six percent and lactose and coffee, but um Jeff's Kish slash smoking a joint as people smoking say a joint. when I do Chef's Kiss. Uh the right. Kentish Pilgrim, any banging green hop beers this year? I have not yet had a single fucking green hop beer. I was gonna go down to uh Ramsgate Brewery, uh Green Hop Festival. I think it was two weekends ago or something, but then something popped up. I can't remember what it was. Might have been my foot that was buggered or or something else. I had an injury or whatever, so I didn't go in the end. Really regret not going. Yeah, we still need well, to cover yeah. some so, green festival stuff. What what I would say is last year from my research, um, Ledbury Ales make amazing ones. Uh, Five Points still make great ones. Um those are the ones I enjoyed most. But yeah, I need to track some down before they disappear because I've only got a couple of weeks left, I'd imagine. Um, is there a chance of getting Jim back for a reunion video? Is he busy slash not interested in a beer anymore slash uncomfortable on camera of such a big audience? Um, no clue. Haven't spoken to him for quite a while. Um, probably unlikely. I don't know whether he's, he's that into beer anymore. I mean, he, I mean, when we started, I was a beer geek. Jim uh, just enjoyed drinking. And Brad was along because he wanted to do the camera work. Um, and obviously that's all changed now. But yeah, I, he was not a beer geek, Jim. So um, I suspect not. Uh, but if it's of interest, we can send that message, see see what happens. Um, I would like to note, before we started the channel, I did do a West Coast 
pilgrimage down the west coast on the Amtrak and I went to Portland and all these other places and went to amazing breweries before we started the channel. So I wouldn't say I was not a craft beer geek, but it was you enjoy craft beer. It was in a genesis, it was in a very early stage, and I'm I'm just a tech geek, so you know, I love cameras and stuff like that. So that was where I was coming from it, and also the fact that I could see that there was a, a sort of gap in the market, so to speak, and that we could potentially do something interesting and have a unique take on things, but but nobody else was sort of seemed to be sort of doing the same stuff. So that was that was my kind of sort of entry into it. And also just like drinking beer. It's and great. Brad continues to have madcap ideas of channels we should do. Um which we haven't got time to do. <laughs> no, not anymore. But maybe maybe one day, you know. Once we've got people editing the videos, directing the videos, researching the videos for us, we'll yeah. we'll go off and start all the other channels. Right. Be great. Yeah. Plenty of plenty of space. Exactly. Um, where is the best place to go try English car scales? Uh, the best pub in the world is Southampton Arms. Um, London has some other great car scale pubs, but really up north is better. So Sheffield, Manchester, Leeds are probably the three places you really want to go for great car scale. But London, London has places just as good as those. It's just you can't walk between them all because it's London. Um, but yeah, so Southampton Arms, Pembury, the Cock. Uh, the um, the hope. Um, I'm missing one that's really ah, uh, the hop. There we go, I found it. Um, so yeah, lots of great places in London. Um, all righty, well, I think we've I think we've reached all the end of all the questions. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll stop plugging this documentary endlessly at you. Uh, which I'm sure you'll be delighted to hear. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to everyone who's given us lovely comments. Um, we, we're going to take a break from like the big projects for a little while where we work out what's next. Um, but we will have some cracking craft beer channel videos coming your way. We've got our next homebrew episode, which is going to be Bohemian Pilsner. We've got our blind taste test of UK Fest beers. And basically, we're going to have an Oktoberfest in this studio next week where we'll film Brad and me drinking the six official Oktoberfest beers and geeking out about that. That's the we're filming that the day before my 40th birthday. There you go. Finish the 30s the way you started it, probably drunk. Drunk. That's drunk. it. Drunk. Hopefully, I don't fall asleep on the train home. Uh, that would be ideal. I did last time. So, oh, did you? But those end yeah. up in Brighton, Bradley. Oh, I, I woke up uh, like a stop before, but I did fu fu fully fall asleep uh, from Ooh. the last, last shoot day we had. Yeah. The trick is to not sit down. That's how I used to get home safely when I lived in London on night buses. If you sit down, you're in trouble. Well, so you're you're I don't anyway. sit down when I'm pissed and I'm going back from a long shoot day. Yep. No, not happening, mate. Especially now that we stand during our shoots as well. Yeah. There, there is no break to be had. Uh, anyway, we've managed to derail the, the outro. Um, thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you so much for watching the documentary. Please do uh, join our Patreon. That supports what we do, and it's great fun. Uh, most of the people, I think, watching this now are actually in our Discord forum, so bless you. Um, yeah, there's there's nothing left to say other than there will be no Brad Bass, and uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for all of your support and for watching. We'll see there you on Brad Bus, because there's going to be a Johnny Bus, right? A Johnny Jet. We'll get the Johnny Jet, then the Brad Bus. Johnny Jet Boat, maybe. Johnny Jet Boat. Oh, my God. See, now we're talking. Now it's got my name in the title. I'm interested. Um, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> love and beer to you all. Um, and we will see you on Wednesday for an Oktoberfest adventure. Stay love cool. And love and beer.